star, as they used to do many years ago. Now, the wish has come true. When we get away from here, we'll be living among normal people again. <laughs> I suppose I ought to wish you luck. Oh, Mrs. Collins. Eve and I are going to get married as soon as we put this place behind us. That terrible dog. He always barks when the old man stays up at night. There is something strange in the air. Don't you feel it? Or is it that I'm just so sensitive? Are you on the dawn shift too? Yes, for the last time on this dull island. Go ahead and kiss each other. Don't mind me. Black Widow. She never misses an opportunity to stick her nose in other people's business. Still, that's good advice she gave us. are messing up everything. What do you expect on an August night? Take a look yourself, George, before it gets too light. Hey, Fred! Did you see what I see? Yes, it's nothing. Holy smokes, Fred! Wait a minute! What do you think it means? I told you, those falling stars are muddling everything. I need some coffee. Skip the coffee, Fred. What can it be? I took some slides. We'll find out in an hour. An hour, my foot will go to the electronic telescope. Precisely. You learn that I'm the kind of man who takes his responsibilities seriously. Morning, Dr. Confield. Hi. Go on, tell him. Maybe we had better take a look through the electronic telescope first. 
and check the reading in this area. The whole thing's pretty unlikely. We both saw it. Let me see. Come on. Can you tell me why Fish Face is so frantic? George? I'm afraid he's right. I suppose I was just trying to avoid having last minute complications. You must help me, Mrs. Collins. Me? Some very strong coffee, please. I'll get some right away. Hurry up, Fred. Let's go to the radio section. I'll bet the other observatories have reported something. Don't forget, Reynolds, that we have the most powerful equipment in the world. What's happening, Reynolds? Something terrible. reported from the other observatories. Just routine. That's impossible. George, please. The teletypes receive over 1,000 words a minute, maybe somewhere among the messages that haven't been decoded yet. My dear colleague, unusual messages are signaled by a red light and are given transmission and decoding precedence. Damn it, old Pat, what's that? It's base three on Mars. For the last 97 hours, they've been trying to get through in vain. Base three on Mars? Bob Cole, my former instructor at military school, is in command there. What's the matter? Nothing important. There's a magnetic storm raging with a sodium formation. Is that what interests you? Ah, nuts. Take the sodium and make yourself a bicarbonate. Hmm. Well? Nothing here. The old man must be told. You don't mean to insinuate that I should. You are the dean, Dr. Cornfield. Precisely. But he'd just start to snap at me, and then I'd... I'd lose my temper. We have no authority. It's up to you, Cornfield. Nothing of the kind. Calm yourselves, gentlemen. I'll tell him. If it turns out to be a flash in the pan, I'll be the lightning rod. This is my last day here, anyway. Precisely. After all, he was the first one to see it. Will someone please tell me what's going on? I've never been known to snap at anyone. <laughs> Lie down, Gideon. Come forward, Steele. I know all about it. I don't understand what you mean, Professor. I'm talking about the reason that brings you here. Wake up, young fella. I'm talking about the outsider. The outsider? It's all written there. Amazing. How did you do it? Young fella, you and the others have to see and hear before you can know. I have one advantage over all of you. Calculus. However, I'm glad to see that you at least know how to read it. In spite of the disdain in which I hold all your stupid and dull mechanical apparatuses, do you think that I don't examine carefully the readings that you send me? The difference is that you accept those readings as results. Whereas for me, they are merely elements in a formula. I have been aware of this thing 
for the last five days. And I have been curiously awaiting to see when the rest of you would discover it. It was only just before dawn that we were able to... Oh, so you didn't see it until just before dawn. And didn't any one of you notice the change of position of the two outer planets? Change of position? Infinitesimal. It merely heralded the arrival of the outsider. Why do you call it the outsider? Because it comes from another galaxy. It simply entered the solar system during the night. None of the other observatories have reported it yet. They couldn't. They don't have powerful enough instruments. That's what Dr. Cornfield maintains. Ah, yes. How very interesting. I'm sorry to hear that I have an opinion that is shared by your Dr. Cornfield. What the devil are you staring at? Get away from me. I can take care of this. Anyway, it's all there. Diameter, dimension, speed, and course of the outsider. Now you keep your trap shut with the others and get out of here. Professor, a foreign body, a planet, the outsider as you call it, has entered the solar system and is heading right for us. Because of its size and particular characteristics, it won't burn up when it contacts the Earth's atmosphere. It could be a catastrophe. Now that's a perfect summary of the situation. So, maybe it would be prudent, Professor, to warn the others, the department, the high command. Steel, I've already told you to keep your trap shut and get out of here. With pleasure. In fact, I've also come here to say goodbye. Oh, if only I had a handkerchief, I'd burst into tears. The ones who should have noticed it before you are those idiots on Mars. But since they're all army, they weren't able to, Professor. They are surrounded by a magnetic storm with the formation of sodium. <laughs> now that's not a bad alibi. <laughs> High Command, this is Mars Base 3. High Command, this is Mars Base 3. High Command, this is Mars Base 3. Over. We've lost contact again, Commander. Right on microwave. Sir, there's another signal. This is Mars Base 3. It's for you, Commander. Plug in the speaker. Hello. Hello. Commander Cole speaking. Hi, Bob. This is Steele. Fred Steele? Where did you spring up from? I have a message for you. I'm leaving the island tomorrow. Then Eve Barnett and I are going to get married. Congratulations. But you've hit me at a bad moment, Fred. I have a convoy coming in, and until just a few seconds ago, my lines of communication were cut off. You'll have to excuse me, Fred. Wait, Bob. There's something else. I'll transmit it in code. Fred! What are you doing? He's a crazy kid. He could have made a fine soldier, but he got a sudden passion for astronomy. Astronomy being called Eve Barnett? Exactly. I'll decode the message. Probably some more of his foolishness. Do they answer yet? No, sir. Oh, so now you think marriage is a lot of foolishness? Not ours, Kathy. <laughs> What is it, Boyd? Commander, we've established contact with the convoy escort. They're off course, 12 degrees from the curve of fall. Of course. Connect me with the convoy escort. Plug in the speaker, Boyd. Yes, sir. Mike Sierra, 1-5. This is Mars, base three. Over. Mars, base three. This is Mike Sierra, 1-5. Go ahead. Do you know the causes of your deviation from course? Causes unknown. We have been in free fall navigation for one, zero, three Earth hours. Deviation became noticeable just nine hours ago. Request permission to operate rocket propulsion motors in order to correct course. There's no other solution. Permission granted. Gyroscopes in operation. Juliet 5, this is Mike Sierra 15. Duplicate our maneuver. Over. 
Mike Sierra, 1-5. This is Juliet, 5. Wilco, out. Gyroscope set maximum. Gyroscope set maximum. Engines at eight gammas. Engines at ten gammas. Inversion, 35 degrees. be able to get back on course, Commander. I don't see why not, Boyd. Bob, Fred Steele's message. Open the protective dome with the parabolic antennas. Switch on the electronic telescope. The magnetic storm has passed its peak, but there's still an inferno raging outside, sir. Execute the order. This is the space zone to be scanned. Yes, sir. The dome is opening. They're still off course. With a constant of two degrees increase. Mike Sierra, 1-5. This is Mars Base 3. Juliet 5, copy. Increase rocket power to 12 gammas and correct inversion another 1-5 degrees. Wilco. Engines at 12 gammas. 15 degrees more inversion. Bob, look. The outer satellite Deimos is out of orbit. How far out? Six degrees with a Perry Martian displacement of 700 miles. Mike Sierra 1-5, this is base three. Julia 5 copied. Deimos is out of orbit. It may intersect your course. It's coming towards us. We're falling. The cargo carrier can't make it. It's too heavy. Commander. Order the cargo carrier pilots to launch themselves in space to be picked up. Hurry. Juliet 5, this is base 3. Adopt emergency system. Fred was right. We must calculate mass, size, and speed in order to determine its field of attraction. Mike Sierra 1-5, this is base 3. Increase rocket power. Attempt rescue Juliet 5 pilots. Wilco, engines at maximum. Juliet 5, this is Mike Sierra 1-5. Prepare to effect self-launching. Ready in spacesuits. Emergency system in operation. We have opened our depression chamber. Minus five, four, three, two, one, go! Operation affected. Request maneuver instructions. Over. This is base three. Invert another 10 degrees relative to tangent of Deimos. Specify speed of course. Hold tight just a few seconds more. Countermand the order. But, Commander! Mike Sierra 1 5, this is base three. Disregard last order. Execute 35 degree inversion. Speed 16,000 miles. But then we'll head straight for Deimos. Execute! <laughs> That's murder. You're sending them to certain death. That'll do, Boyd. I'm sorry, Commander. I know what I'm doing. Don't you understand, Boyd, that the fields of attraction have undergone an incredible modification? We're falling. We're falling. Don't change course. Keep rocket power at maximum. Confirm. Lewis. Lewis, answer! They'll be landing here on Mars in a few minutes. Commander, please excuse me. Don't let it worry you, Boyd. You just lost your bearings for a moment. 
Lewis, the first pilot on that spaceship, is my son. Thank you for having brought him back to me. You shouldn't thank me. We must prepare a report for the High Command and transmit to Earth its death sentence. Mars Base 3, calling Earth. I was the one, I. And Fred. Fred? Dr. Steele. Oh, yes. <laughs> Your boyfriend. You disobeyed my orders. We saved human lives. Are you going to get a medal? We won't. Maybe the base commander on Mars will. But we didn't do it to win a prize. All the more prize worthy. Aren't you aware, you silly girl, that by this peremptory gesture of yours, you've created a panic before I could... Before? Before I could complete my studies of the outsider? But, Professor... Oh, I know what you're going to say. Something about the salvation of human lives. <laughs> you're a great disappointment to me, Miss Barnett. I've been here at your side for several years now, Professor. And I've learned, if I may say so, to know you. And I have lived with myself many more years than you, if I may say so. And I know myself better. Why are you so determined to appear pitiless? I have no time to lose in popularity contests. And you don't either. Your young man is waiting for you. Is that Commander Cole's report on the outsider's field of attraction? Yes. Goodbye, Eve. Oh, this is interesting. I could almost beg your pardon. Extraordinary. This confirms everything. Eve. Eve. What's that for? I don't know. Fred, we can't. We can't go. Why? What's happening now is bigger than we are. It's not only happening here. It's happening in New York, in Moscow, in the tiniest village in Africa. But here... The important thing is to face it together. Forgive me, Fred. You've always done everything I've ever wanted. You don't deserve. But I'm not going. I'll go by myself. Don't fight, dears. Neither one of you is leaving. Dr. Steele, the flight's suspended. And so are all transfer permissions. All scientists have been mobilized as of today. <laughs> Let's hope they give us uniforms. Then we'll all be equals together, won't we? And darlings, you'll be interested to know that the old man has been severely reprimanded. <laughs> reprimanded? I have been reprimanded. As usual, the... Bigwigs have to try to find a scapegoat. Hmm. He was trying to understand them, Professor. The news caught them by surprise. Panic has been widespread, and perhaps they think, mistakenly, that uh, if they'd been informed in time... Wonderful! Wonderful! What's your name? Cornfield, I believe. Well, Mr. Cornfield, you are wonderful. You have a facile tongue. Well, for once, I will loosen my tongue. I didn't say anything because I wouldn't have been believed. You know, it's not difficult to tell the truth, but it's impossible to be believed. You want an example? Read it. It's written here that in spite of all predictions, the outsider will not collide with the Earth. 
Go on, get out of the way, Gideon. That's the boy. Professor Benson, in brief, you maintain that... I maintain nothing. I ascertain. I ascertain on the basis of mathematical elements which are irrefutable that the outsider will bypass the Earth at a distance of 95,000 miles without even dreaming of grazing the outside edge of our atmosphere. Greenwich, Mount Palomar and the observatory in the Urals, mm. as well as the bases on Mars and the Moon, have formulated other forecasts that are very different. Your esteemed colleague Newman and the great physicist Ratoff have expressed as their opinion... Mr. Cornfield, there's only one opinion that interests me, my own. Oh, one would say, ladies and gentlemen, that you are disappointed to learn that the end of the world has been postponed. Clear the launching ramp. Spaceship Alpha 23 in arrival. Engines off. Welcome back to Earth, Cole. General Varick, my wife and assistant. We haven't a moment to lose. We must go to the high command immediately. I understand the fear psychosis is very grave. Everyone wants to run away. But where? It's impossible to predict on what part of the globe the outsider will fall. Gentlemen. We've heard about the wave of suicides and riots. To stem them, we've even gone so far as to announce our official approval of the theory of that charlatan Benson. What is Professor Benson's theory, General? The outsider will bypass the Earth at a distance of 95,000 miles on its course toward the Sun. We know damn well it's not true. Of course. However, we have committed ourselves to destroy the outsider beyond the limits of the Earth's atmosphere. I've worked out a detailed development of the automatic plan of strategy which you transmitted to me. Good. We will compare your conclusions with ours. Our nomination as operational commander has been met with a feeling of universal relief, Cole. But my name's unknown to the public, General. Don't forget that you were the first to discover the outsider. All I did was receive the information communicated to me by Dr. Steele. I decoded the message myself. We know all that. However, the people have faith in you. It's not to our interest to disillusion them. General. Today we are facing an adversary just as much to be feared as the outsider. Public opinion. But the truth is... We cannot afford to split hairs. From now on, we can only rely on one thing. You don't even exist for her. Professor! Mm. Professor! Professor Benson, it stopped just as you predicted. The outsider has started to orbit around the Earth. What did you say? Professor, it stopped at exactly 95,000 miles, just as you calculated. And it's gone into orbit. 
Congratulations. Professor Benson, my congratulations. Stand back, you madman. Give me your reports. It's impossible. Why? The first time in my life I have made an error in calculus. An error that is mathematically impossible. The outsider should not have gone into orbit. Benson, is your little error in calculus the only thing you can think of? Dr. Steele, I have never held you in very high esteem, but I must admit that this time, without knowing it, you have put me on the right track. You're right. For once, I shall not depend on mathematical calculations. Cornfield, you know much better than I how to operate these stupid visual screens that permit us to talk to the bigwigs in politics and the military forces. I have no intention of speaking to them, but you will. You will inform them, in my name if you like, that the outsider must be destroyed, and immediately. Can't you get any closer with the telescopic lens, Boyd? This is the maximum. Spectroscopic examination reveals existence of two mineral salts, unknown to the solar system. Complete absence of atmosphere. Interior of mass is not compact, possibly made up of gases. External radioactivity soundings register an increasingly high percentage. We could make more detailed findings in a reconnaissance flight to the outsider. Benson's against it. Benson? They all hang on his word these days. He just keeps repeating, destroy it immediately. With the radioactivity I just registered, I'd go slow. If atomic missiles are used, the explosion could cause some pretty serious chain reactions. I think so too. We must have more data to work on, no matter what the cost. Professor! I've never seen you before outside your den, as they call it. My dear. Aren't you feeling well, Professor? Uh. Here are the latest readings. Mm, still all right. They'll soon see. Do you know what is the most tiring thing of all, Eve? Having to communicate and explain when the important thing is to know. Do you love your neighbor, Eve? I ought to say to the devil with alarm, my duty is to science. I'm a scientist, not a defender of the human race. So. They don't want to destroy the outsider. They want to explore it. That'll be funny. Come along with me. Where? We're going to enjoy the show. Come on. I don't know the way. Yes, Professor. Honored. That's it, precisely. We are honored. Do you mind if I sit down? I've walked long enough. Sit here. Oh, what a lovely surprise. Would you care for a cup of coffee? I'm not here on a social visit. Oh, excuse me. I've come to drink a cup of gall. Cornfield, are you quite certain that you made it clear to the High Command? My complete disapproval of this 
further waste of time? More than once, I assure you, but the United Commission declared that the disintegration of the outsider would be too risky, so close to the Earth. Idiots. Is that where you look? Precisely, Professor. We've just established contact. The image is clear enough. They seem to have made some progress in this field. Well, this spaceship is equipped for an exhaustive examination of the outsider's internal mass structure. And the research exploration team is composed of the very best scientists in the world. I don't understand why they didn't invite you to the party, Dr. Cornfield. They will approach the planet until they are within 75 miles of its surface. What did you say? 75 miles. Precisely. A match. Somebody please give me a match. My command, this is Bravo Zebra 8. We have entered into orbit and are circling on a radius of 350 miles. Proceeding with electronic soundings. Over. Execute reduction of orbit and spiral course. Over. Maneuver executed. Everything in order. Over. Looks like a kid show. <laughs> Inversion course 45 degrees. General Varick, why did you leave me grounded? You'll have other opportunities to play the hero. Look! They're overtaking us! seen and I've had my satisfaction I made no error in calculus the outsider should not have gone into orbit since it did it's because there was a voluntary modification you said voluntary uh, precisely cornfield Put me in contact with the department bigwigs. The time has come to look them in the eye. Now, leave me alone. speak to you. It's about time I did. No one has ever prevented you. I want to be listened to then. It depends on what you say. It's very serious. Your days are numbered. Just a moment. I prefer that you speak before the United Commission. Benson. 
Gentlemen, you have exactly 840 hours left in which to act. In the meantime, the outsider will be tightening its orbit around the Earth. It will descend to a distance of 45,000 miles from the Earth's surface, and then... What proofs do you have? You'll find them written there. I take it for granted you know how to read. The formulas have just been photographed. We will examine your hypothesis most attentively. This is no hypothesis. I tell you that the outsider, in tightening its orbit around the Earth, will provoke serious upsets in the balance of nature's elements, changes of climate, and oreography in vast zones of the globe. You're concerned about the fate of the human race. You're wrong, my dear sir. I am not moved by humanitarian motives. Well then, Professor Benson? I want to know the truth. What truth? That's hidden inside the nucleus of the outsider. I'll make you a deal. Benson, you explain yourself back. Find yourself to the heart of the matter. Please tell us, Professor Benson. I have already determined that deep within the outsider there are conscious beings who come from another galaxy. Fugitives, perhaps, from a dying world. Then, according to you, the outsider is a kind of survivor's raft. That's a colorful description. But it states the case. These space survivors are attracted to the Earth's life-giving warmth. Very well, then. I present you with the possibility of saving the human race. That is, to put it bluntly, I will save your lives for you. Yours. And yours. And yours on one condition, that you give me the necessary means for studying and uncovering the outsider's secret. What means, Professor Benson? I ask to have the absolute command of all operations invested in my hands. you back to the house? In the name of the United Commission, I am instructed to communicate to you our most profound admiration and gratitude, Professor Benson. The Executive Office has proposed you for the highest academic award. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. As for your request, the United Commission finds it necessary to turn it down. That doesn't surprise me. Under the circumstances, the initiative passes to the military forces. This is war. Now, I'm not of draft age. substance, the operational plan is all here, in these buttons. The missiles, the spaceships, from the first to the ninth wave. There are three regular strategic alternatives and one for emergency. 
This automatic plan has been conceived by our military engineers, guided by Commander Robert Cole, who will take personal part in the operation. That's a good enough guarantee for anyone. We're depending on you, Mr. Barrington, as chief of the Psychological Bureau, to unleash every propaganda means at your disposal to tranquilize public opinion. You can count on it, General. I believe I have all the elements necessary. Gentlemen. Bob, don't you think Varick is oversimplifying? That's one way to gather courage. When I think of how we got married, based on a psychotechnical examination which determined the affinity between our individual characteristics. What's this all about, Kathy? Now I bless that psychotechnical exam. I love you, Bob. I'd like to have a house of our own and babies. I don't remember that from the psychotechnical exam. But I'm happy, even like this. As long as you never leave me. Take me with you, Bob. Up there? The plan is all here. I want to be included in one of those buttons. But only because you're there. This is the one, isn't it? The ninth wave. The last one. But you... Don't forget Benson. What's Benson got to do with it? Remember his prediction? 840 hours left. Only 118 have passed. Even admitting that is right. Do I have to climb down, or can I listen to you from up here? I know the plan of attack. First, the telecontrolled missiles will be launched as a diversion tactic. The discs will enter into their usual formations, provoking what the military experts refer to as the moment of neutralization. Only then will the spaceships attack the discs and destroy them. That technique's as old as the hills, supposed to be clever tactics, hmm? Why are you telling me all this stupid nonsense? The squadron commander is Bob Cole, who was the instructor of my class at school. Ha! Fine class that must have been, judging by the results. He has asked me to take part in the expedition. Young fella, this is a dangerous mission. Or as they say in such cases, a hopeless one. I know, but I need your permission. I'm still part of the scientific complement here. I don't like the smell of this story. Why? Because it's inspired by non-scientific motives. Explain yourself, Professor. What the devil do you think I'm doing? Eve. I want to present you a hero. He wants to go to war. All because of you. Because of me? Miss Barnett and I no longer have anything in common. It was all a big mistake. Fred! I've been made aware that Miss Barnett is completely indifferent, as far as I am concerned. And fortunately, I've discovered that I have the same feeling of indifference regarding uh, her. What? What a dull, silly little performance this is. Right out of a 19th century melodrama. Professor, if Eve still interested me one little bit, I wouldn't be going out of my way to look for trouble, as you seem to be intimating. Nonsense. Human feelings are inconsistent. In fact, they're the only inconsistent elements in all nature. <laughs> be quiet, Gideon. I didn't ask for your opinion. All right, Steele. You can go with your old college chum and have yourselves a nice class reunion. I've just had an idea. Naturally, it's a great one. High command, this is Alpha 2-3. Three. three disc formations, I... Enough! Cut off the telecommand! Are you crazy? Cut off the telecommand, I say! We must maneuver freely! That would be an act of insubordination! Two discs are heading towards us! Gamble your career, you idiot, if you don't want to gamble your life! 
Alpha 2-3 has cut off the telecommand. Hit one of them, Bob. Not with the ray. Run into him. Don't look at me like that. I'm not insane. He can't see you. And if you don't use the radio, he won't hear you. Go to it, Bob. Do as I tell you. It's Fred Steele's spaceship, Professor. Wait a few seconds, my girl, before you put me on the rack. You must pass as close to him as possible, almost grazing him. Falling. It's falling towards the Earth. The other discs are retreating. At this speed, they'll burn up when they hit the atmosphere. At least Cole and his men will end up in glory. Damn it, Bob. You've got to regain control. Maybe this is my party, Fred. Close your big mouth. Watch out. I'm cutting off the engines. As soon as we're perpendicular to the Earth, I'll start the engines again. What about the disc? If it has as good a pilot as we do, it's safe. Engines! Come on, Phil. Contact the High Command immediately. Tell them in my name to call back all surviving spaceships. The fallen disc must be recovered at all costs. As for you, my girl, you get hold of that sometime suitor of yours, if he's still alive. I want his report on the fallen disc. And if the bigwigs don't want to listen to me this time either, you can tell them in my name to all go to hell. It's slowing down. The disc is slowing down. But it can't free itself from the force of gravity. It's planing. It's planing. So is coal. Soon. Very soon now. We'll be looking the outsider's inhabitants in the face. Quickly, Eve. Connect me with Professor Benson. Right away, Fred. We forced an entry, sir. This is Steele calling Professor Benson. Speak up, young fella. Professor, we've entered the disk. We've searched everywhere. There's no one here. Who'd you expect to see? Your grandmother? Look harder. Everything is connected to a cylinder. It's transparent. It seems to be made of quartz with changing colors. It's there. What is? A cipher. Get official permission. Or steal it, anything you like. But bring it here to me.
That's not it, Cornfield. I detest your stupid gadgets, but at least I know that you should raise the frequency and reduce the wavelength. That's as far as it can go, Professor. Hmm, you mean as far as you can go. Ah, I was waiting for you, my girl. Atmospheric radioactivity rising. The outsider is closing in. Sixteen hours left. Benson must be reminded of his own prophecy. The key to the cipher may be discovered any moment now, or maybe never. It's a terrible, drawn-out agony for the whole world. The abrupt end that everyone expected would have been better. Most things happen unexpectedly, even the apocalypse. Benson, the mathematician, but in Benson, the cannon maker. Don't be disturbed by the welcome you get. The old man hates polite chatter and has no sense of hospitality. Excuse me, but have you two made up? We haven't had time or the opportunity. There's only one thing out of step with the times, Eve. Love. Please forgive me. <laughs> Quite the contrary. I'm grateful to you, Kathy. I'm afraid, Eve. Not of suffering myself, but I'm afraid for him, my husband. Coming? Very glad to meet you, Commander. I've heard quite a lot about you from Dr. Steele. Your wife? Yes. Delighted. Any kids? No, but we will have someday. Good for you. Take a chair. Mrs. Collins, I think the moment has come for you to offer some of your delicious coffee. Uh, Mrs. Collins is so good. Psychic, you know. And uh, these are my kids, my collaborators, I should say. And this is uh, Dr. Cornfield, yes, the eldest. Uh, the dean, I mean. <sighs> Have a cigar, hmm? I don't mind if I do. Ah, Gibson, <laughs> what about some music? Professor, I'm very grateful to you for your courtesy, but 
You don't like music? Not very much. Oh, but Commander, music is language, the language of the bodies in space. Have you never heard of Pythagoras, the harmony of the spheres, the language of numbers? Oh, but of course, you come from the same school as Dr. Steele. Professor, enough. I have found, you understand, a richer language than your rude, imperfect spoken tongue. An order which sound will give from afar will make you call the most listened to commander in the history of the human race. Because we have deciphered for you the language of the outsider. And you will speak to the discs up there. You will give the order and they will destroy themselves. And your weapons will be like these, this and that and that. Oscillators. Precisely. The highest of frequencies, wavelength six millimeters. Cornfield, you're wonderful. Gibson, Reynolds, Moran, music. What are we waiting for? Listen, listen to this. I will write the score, and you will play it. Watch this! the outsider is ready to go into effect immediately. But I want to discover the whole truth. It's passing close by to us. I cannot agree to let you destroy it out of cowardice. Professor, there are only 72 hours left in the time limit you yourself set. But you cannot destroy it on me now that I'm so close. Professor, you act as if it were your personal property. Science is nobody's personal property. Very well, then. You deserve what's coming to you. What do you mean? You have studied the planet's surface, but you have not torn open its bowels, which spewed forth the disks that I destroyed. That's where the truth is hidden, deep inside. You will destroy an unopened tin can, and that tin can will blow up in your hands. Do you really think there is someone inside? More than someone.
Gentlemen, I will give you a guarantee. For the first time, the first time in my scientific life, I will come out of my den prepared to pay with my person. Support. Professor, Professor, how do you feel? Like I never felt before, my dear. The radioactivity percentage is very high. The amianthus spacesuits won't protect us for very long. Long enough. Remember, Professor, that you must obey my orders. Aye, aye, sir. We have just three hours. Then the outsider will be destroyed. What a pity. My watch is always slow. You should wear both of them. One is even more than enough. Your glasses, Professor. To see the truth.
tried in vain to escape from a world dying in agony, up in one of the higher galaxies. They have been traveling for millions of light years. This planet that was intended as their Noah's Ark has become their tomb. What killed them? Time. Perhaps they hoped that their future generations would land on a living world if only a blind one like ours. Perhaps the secret of their death is locked inside here. you crazy fools that their plans have survived their death and would have set them down on the earth uselessly those plans are condensed in something here which we must fight then we shall be able to penetrate the secret of their immortal formulas destruction plan ready for activation no! professor turn back i thank you orders from high command return immediately Eve! Eve! Boy, I'll join you later. I can't leave them here. That's an order. Get back to the ship. Kathy! Professor Benson! Professor!
plan, General. Stop the plan. Unthinkable. Take off, I tell you. The plan's about to go into action. Cowards. We're cowards. Shouldn't have left them there alone. Especially me. Boy to Commander Cole. Boy to Commander Cole. In the name of God, Commander, answer me. We're going around in a circle. Let's get out of here. We won't leave, Commander, if you don't come back. I can't make it. Save yourselves. Go, Bob, go. Never, Kathy, never. My son, Lewis, and two other men are coming to get you. Answer. Lloyd is trying to repay you. But he's right. Save yourselves. Eve, I beg you. Within 50 seconds, the plan will go into action. I cannot stop it. You're committing suicide. The rescue squad is about to pick up the missing party. Just a few more seconds, General. missiles with special warheads. That's an order. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Contact. I know the truth. Now I can order the outsider to go away. Stop your useless missiles! Engines! die. Kathy! 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 I command, this is X-ray 1-5. Over. I command, this is X-ray 1-5. We're approaching safety distance. Goodbye, Professor. Now you won't know. You'll never know. If they opened up his chest, they'd find a formula where his heart should have been.